So now that we can add, edit, and delete all the users we want, we need to be able to do the same with the pets. But the pets actually sort of come in a, a different area. We need to also be able to link those to the users. Every user or every pet should have a user. It's Normally it's going to be whoever entered them into the database. Um, but when we're admins, we should be able to create a new pet and assign an, uh, a user to it. So this is often done, I do this and end up doing this in WordPress a lot, where someone is supposed to be the author. You really don't want to see posted by admin. You want to see posted by the, the proper author, and then something screwed up on their end, so they just send it to you, quick, add this. And then you also want to attach the right name to it. So what that means is in my admin section, I need to get the pet stuff working. And this is supposed to be under admin pets.php. So here's my admin section. Get rid of some of this stuff. And I'm going to create this is, yeah. I'm just going to duplicate my index and call it pets.php. There we go. And we're users, administration users. So I should have this administration dash pets. And it's going to end up being almost identical. So I'm just going to kind of go through this real quick. Add a new pet. This is going to go to the, the page that adds a new pet. Uh, we'll call it something that makes sense, pet dash add dot php and that way it fits the same pattern as what I'm using over here and I'll duplicate that one and make this pets dash add Add a new pet. There we go. Now, I'm going to start this, and then you're going to see where something goes a little bit wrong when we add the pets and how we have to back up. Under data, if I go down to insert record form wizard, uh, not comments, but we want to be able to add a pet. The ID is going to come in. We're going to let them type in the name, uh, we'll give a, a place where they can type in the number of the, the weight and the age. Um, needs and description, I believe, are supposed to be um, text fields. Fixed is an integer, so that's just going to be a 1 if they are, a 0 if they're not. We actually do that with a um, radio button or, or a checkbox. Either one will work. Um, author. We have to choose an author that's in the database, right? We don't want them to accidentally type in the wrong name of an author or the wrong email or something like that. So in this one, what we'll do is we'll display it as a drop-down menu, but we can actually tell it to go grab information from the database. Go, but it, You can see it's giving me an error. Before this, you have to have a record set. So i got to go get the info from the database, and then I can add it here. So before I can do any of this, this is the part that I need to do some setup for, I need to add a new record set under simple. And it's just going to be rs users from my users table, and I'm just going to get the email first and last name. And it should be, I should filter where the user level is equal to user. So we're only listing the users. Um, this will actually prevent me from from adding as an admin, because we're only going to let admins or users enter their info, so I have to pick a user. Um, I, I can change that. I can actually make it equal to user or another one, but we'll do that in a second. Actually, I could do that here. For user level equals user or user underscore level equal admin. Oh, now we can do both. But I just want to exclude the 
public people who are commenting. I don't want to be able to say that they can create one of these. That just wouldn't make any sense. I can also do where user level does not equal public. Either one would work. Uh, and I test it. Yay, there's me. Actually, there should have been another person in there. Oh, I made my other one public. So if I do this one as a user, I test this now. I get both of them. Okay. So now I can add a new pet. And she will be will have all the right stuff to it. So pets. The ID, I don't actually want to add that. I want the database to enter it for me. The pet name is going to be just a text field. The weight is a text field, but it should be a number. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Just as is. Same with age. should be an integer. Needs is, we'll make that a text area. It'll be a big box where they can type in stuff, and we'll just make that a paragraph. Same with description. And what might be nice is if that actually came first. You can use the arrows here to reorder things. So description then needs where's fixed. There we go. Um, fixed is going to be a actually make this a checkbox for a one or a zero. And basically, if it's the computer is going to see if it's been checked, it will be worth the value zero, uh, value one. Basically, true will be stored in the database. If it can't find it, it's going to create the variable and just set it equal to zero. Um, because checkboxes only send their information over the post if they've been checked. Otherwise, they're just null. Which also tells you that you don't want whatever that is. Okay, now here we go. Here's author. This will be the this will be the fun one. Author is going to be a menu submitted as text, but I have to create it from the database, and it's going to be RS users. We'll put the label. Uh, the label should be email, and then the we'll put the first name and last name equal to. Uh, I'll go in and edit this so it's first and last, but this only lets me do one at a time. You can also have it dynamically set equal to one of them. We don't need to do that. Um, we'll need to do that on the next one, and I'll show you that. Keep going. I don't need date created. I do need species. And we never really created a way for that to happen, did we? Uh, I can either create a menu that is just currently has all of it, or we can go and create that out of the database. Um, which means I would, if we do that in the database, I would immediately have to cancel all of this, create the database, create the record set, then come back here and start over. So why don't I just do it by hand for now. Uh, so let's just say you can have cat, dog, uh, what else? Birds. I don't know what else we can have. Lizard. What other kind of critters should we have? Chinchillas. Because they're adorable. I'm so allergic to chinchillas. Uh, <laughs> and moose. <laughs> you have a pet moose. Sure, that's that sounds great. Um, I can do the same with shots. That will just will make that a checkbox as a one or a zero. And the rating is supposed to be a number from one to five. Um, and that's given, we have this, it's not created by the commenters, just the way we have this is given by the um, the people who make, by our users, you guys who are doing the movie reviews, they'll put a, a star rating. Um, so what that can be is a menu as well, whose labels 
I'm just going to be the numbers. Submit as floating point number. I forgot about that. That means we could actually have the intermediate values. Floating point, do you remember those? Yes? Okay. You could tell me what they are? <laughs> Karen, good. Yep. Computers, it, computers go haywire. You have to tell them that they're supposed to use decimals, otherwise they they don't like you. Ooh, should we have a zero? I gave it at least one star. <laughs> okay. After inserting, we'll just send them back to the to the pets page. Oh, I'm gonna have to recreate those for the update page. That's okay. Woo! That's a lot of stuff. Let's see. Add beast. Let's see if this works out. So if I go to pets. I can add a new pet, except I can't. Pet add. Oh, I had pets add. That will not help. There we go. Now I'm in. So I'll put in Sparky. He's, I don't know, 50 pounds. He's five years old. Yeah, he's a turtle. Uh, I forgot to make the description a text area. That's actually a pretty easy fix. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a lot. So, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but Dreamweaver lets you click on a text area and you can change between single, multi line, and password. And multi it just flips it between an input and a text area. So it won't really affect anything here. Um, what were we saying about him? He's really fast? Okay. Um, top speed clocked at 88 mph. <laughs> Needs uh, plutonium. And a hoverboard. Alright, just to see if this works, we'll see. We'll let him know that he's fixed, um, and we can choose which author we want to be in charge of him. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, here. Okay, I can blow this up. You can see that these are the options for that particular select, that menu, but the values are the emails. That's what will get stored. That's what links the foreign key from the user's table to, because the email is the primary key on the user's table, that's what we're storing in the um, other, in the pets table, but we can display their first name instead, so it's a little bit more user friendly. So we can have whatever crazy, weird identification number you want, you make that the value, but then you can put something nice and pretty and understandable as the actual label. Um, and we'll say that this is, uh, hey, he's a 4.5, he's okay. We'll add him. And of course, I have no idea if this works, so we don't have those displaying yet. So localhost slash php my admin. Shelter. Browse my pets. Please don't do this again. There we go. I have to open it in a new tab, but it'll do it. So, Sparky, he's number one. And he's all of this is in there. Fixed came in as a as a one. Pet shots came in as a zero, um, just because they didn't select anything. Ooh, why did that happen? I think it's because I don't have this column set up properly. That's not right. Should be decimal or. One. 
Now it's a five. Okay, now it'll give me a point oh rating. Apparently had that set up wrong. So I'm going to do an inline edit. Go over here, make that four point five. Save it and see if it works. Save. Hello, computer. Still not doing it. Hmm. We try adding them again. See if it's possible. The snowball that is I don't know, like eight pounds. We've got Simpsons have been around for like twenty five years. Uh, not uh, this is snowball two. I think I'm seven now. <laughs> how many? I, I don't know how many there are now. I thought there were four or five. <laughs> That's funny. Um, needs duff beer. I'm gonna try this as a different one. Sally, Sally made this one and a pet rating of two point five. She's not letting me go back in and change it. I think that. Xamp is just flipping out right now for no particular reason. It's not saving it properly. I actually have a, a re-downloaded Xamp entirely, and I'm going to reinstall it. And yeah, that's weird. It should go back to the regular. I think I'm able to change this when we make the um, update happen here in a minute. Okay, so I can add a new pet. I've got a couple in there now. Um, this should mean that stuff is showing up on my home page. Yeah, there's Snowball, there's Sparky the Turtle, and some weird stuff is going on there. So let me go, before we add the update and delete stuff, let me sh figure out what's going on here. Um, the latest entries is that we were going to give the, the name, the species, um, age and weight were going to be small, and then a big description would, would pop out. Then we'll let him know if he's got his shots. Probably put a little descriptor, that, descriptor there. And the way this is working right now is all it stores is a 1 or a 0 in the database. So what we can do is right now it's just, looks like it's this. Shots echo the value. Well, how about this instead? If pet shots equals one, then I'll echo yes, else echo no. That's pretty much what I'm going to do for all the ones and zeros. Don't display a one. One means display the positive thing. Zero means display the negative thing. So this should make it yeah, there we go. Oh, this looks horrible because I don't have any CSS on this. I really need to get like some divider lines in between them. Um, those will come. All right, so back in admin, I need to be able to edit the pets, so I better get back to that. Um, I'm going to do a couple little cheats here. I think I can do this right. So I can either add a new pet, but if you want to edit a pet, you have to be able to select the pet you want to edit. So I'm just going to get a nice big uh, a record set list of all the pets, add an edit and a delete button at the um, end of each one. Uh, so back here on my pet administration, I need a record set. This one can be a simple one. It's not going to be complicated. RS pets. Grab from the pets. I'll just grab everything because why not? Don't really care about sorting them. Yeah, just put them all out. I need a little table that's going to be. I'm not exactly sure. Two rows, five columns. I'll figure this out in a second. Um, name, species. Uh, 
uh, and date created. Inside here, I'm going to put edit, and then inside there, I'll put delete. We could probably put other things out here, but I don't really want to get too complicated on this just yet. Um, in order to do this right, I got to, I can do this in kind of either way, but I need to set this to pet-edit.php, and this will be pet-delete.php. They're both going to need parameters where we send ID equals and the pet number. Um, so pet edit is going to get the parameter ID. I like to use ID for everything. Grab the pet ID. I'm going to do the exact same thing for delete. Parameter ID ID okay. So that should be href pet edit ID pet edit.php question mark id equals grab the id same for delete okay that's what i want okay so this only gives me sparky but it doesn't give me snowball because i don't have a repeat region on it i need to take this table row and repeat it not the whole table just the row and server behavior repeat region for now i'm just going to list everything All right, so I can go to the edit page, and it's not going to work, but it is going to the right place, and it's sending the right ID number. If I do snowball, she's getting two. So that's good. That's what I want. Uh, delete should be working the same way. There's one. Delete gives me two. Excellent. Now i got to go make those pages. Pets, pet, add. Um... See if I can do a cheat on this. I'm going to take pet add, make a duplicate, and change it to pet edit. And then I'm going to take the insert record out. So it's just the form. Now, the nice thing is that the reason I did that is so I don't have to recreate all of these. The only one I actually don't have is going to be the record set for RS users. Oh, it brought that with it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, let me make sure that this is working and it didn't screw anything up in the process. This doesn't work, but right now, yeah, I, it's still got everything in here. Um, in order to do this now, I have to have this page. It's got to grab this ID grab that pet out of the database, and then throw that info into all of these different bits. Um, and this is doable. Under record set, it's going to be RS pet edit. On the pets table, I'll just grab everything where ID equals the URL parameter of ID. Yes, that should do it. Click OK. And this is edits. OK, so this is all the users. This is the current pet that we're editing. So we can put a nice little form there that says gives his name. Then you can actually drag this stuff out and just throw it onto them. And it's just setting the, the initial value of each one. It's literally the value parameter for each one. It's getting set to just echo out whatever that is. Um, description needs fixed. Fixed becomes a little bit hard because it's not just checked unchecked or I don't just throw it out there. What I want instead is dynamic. Check if fixed is equal to one. I'll do the same down here for pet shots. Check if pet shots is equal to one. Drop downs also have a nice dynamic button. I can set select value equal to. Oh crap! Which one am I doing? I don't remember that. That author uh, equal to the author. 
And I'm going to do the same for these. Select as equal to species. And pet rating is set equal to rating. There we go. Let's see if this works. Okay, there's Sparky, and he was created by Bob. If this wasn't working, Sally would have been chosen first because drop down menus always choose the first one unless selected equals selected. When this is added, and this is actually what the if then statement is that we, the dynamic um, value. This goes and adds selected equals selected to whichever one is it matches the one in the database. What it actually does does it two different ways. Wah, it does this. Um, it goes and grabs the email address, and right here it displays the user first name. In between here, it asks if the email and the author if they equal each other. If string comparison, if they are the same then echo selected equals selected. It should only happen once. Um, typically it does. So this is actually updating. Now, this doesn't actually update yet. If I go here and I click anything, nothing will happen. I haven't put the update command on it yet. Yeah. So, you can actually do that. I haven't really shown you this this way of doing things yet, but because I've always made you do the wizard, because that builds the form for you. But in this instance, because I, I imported the the form, you just click update record, and it goes and matches what's on the database, what's on the form with what's in the database. ID is an unused primary key, name, weight, age, needs, description fixed. Author, date created does not get a value, species, chance, rating, has a double. Yeah, uh, double is a, um, another name for a floating point. Um, just means it'll do a, uh, whatever it's called, decimal. Only one that I'm worried about is, yes. Um, when I insert this, Oh, it doesn't like it because there's no primary key. Forgot about that. What the insert record wants is a hidden field. And it's going to be pet underscore ID, if I put that in the right place. Not there. Here. That'll be its name. And it needs, we need to drop in the ID of the pet we're using. So all that's going to do is just create a, put the number here. I'll even show you that in the code. Go back. If I edit Sparky, he now has view the source down here. Way at the bottom, there's going to be input name equal pet ID. It's hidden. Its value is one. So we know which one we're editing when this goes to the database. So now if I do the nice little data update pets, the very first one that comes in, pet ID, I can say that that is, that's the identifier. It needs to, to know that when it builds the SQL command. And then I'll send you back to pets and click OK. Maybe this works. Right now i got to go back and start it over. So here's Snowball. He's got all these things. Just gonna snowball. This is now snowball two, three. I don't know how many there are. Uh, let's say he's fixed now, um, and she's magically been changed to a dog. So she's upgraded a little bit. We'll update snowball. If I go in here, all of these should be nice and changed and edited. So you can see I really just added a couple of things. It's really drop-down menus that is the only real difference that I added in this one over the user's crud. Um, uh, the delete would act the exact same way as the admin pages. Um, 
Do you want to see those? Or are you comfortable with those? You want to see them? Yeah. Okay, let's see them again. All right, so we've added uh, delete should be file new. No, let me pets. Let me do duplicate the index for this. Control Control D. It's going to be pet dash delete. And the only reason I want that is just so I don't have to put the restrict access command on this again. I just wanted to have that. I just wanted to do a copy and paste real quick on it. This page is going to be almost identical to pet edit to start off with. We need to know we're sending the ID of the pet that we want to delete through the URL, which this record set captured. So I can copy that from edit and actually paste it into delete. And now this page knows which one we wanted to edit. Before I go any further, oh no, I don't need that. Sorry, I'm just thinking of something else. So, do we really want to delete this one? I really want two forms on here. One is going to be that I want to delete it. And the other one is, I think I have it in snippets. I may still have it in snippets. I thought I had it. Oh well, let's rebuild it. It's just put it in a form, give it a button. And the button says cancel. And then the form just sends to back to wherever. So now I've got one of those I can drop in anytime I need. The delete one is actually the fairly important one. This one is going to go to delete processor page. As soon as this delete processor runs, it is going to just delete the one out of the database that we tell it to and then jump back to the pets page. You'll never actually see it. It just sits on the server and does a, a little job. We need to tell it, do the exact same thing we just did before, put in a hidden field, and I'm going to call it ID and I'm going to go set it equal to the pet ID and this is going to go to pet-delete2.php that'll be the processor page and it's going to look in the post instead of the get for this little little guy um, du duplicate this page so there's delete2 And I actually don't need any text on this page. It's pure. Actually, I might not even need the binding on this page or the record set. I don't think I do. Let me get rid of it because right, I'm just drawing a blank on to how, as to how to do this for some odd reason or what the what it ends up being. But uh, if I go down to display delete record check if form variable ID exists. We're going to go to the shelter, we're going to go to the pets table, primary key column is the ID, it has to match form variable, I called it ID, not pet ID. And after deleting, just go back to pets. And click OK. So now, let's see if Snowball, the horrible mutant, we can delete her. I can cancel. Good. That works. If I delete her, this should go to that other page. And something went wrong. Oh, of course it did. Hmm. Let me do this. 
user authentication, restrict access, you have to be an admin, if denied, go out to log in. Okay, that's there. Then I want to delete a record, primary form, variable ID, current shelter, go to the pets, Go back to pets.php. I'm afraid that should have worked. Yeah, it got stuck on pet delete too. It may have run the command. I'm not sure. What is it doing? Okay. Okay, it did not run the delete command. So, I hope I fixed it. Let's delete it. Delete it. It's getting stuck here. That's confusing me. Okay. Never had that break before. Right now, I assume that this is not a problem. This is the restrict access uh, thing that's going on. Uh, my real escape string switch. Where's the get? If is set get ID, why is that happening? URL parameter. Let me change that to form. It was never going anywhere because it was looking in the URL instead of it was looking in get instead of post. Let me check everything else. All right, let's try it again. Delete, delete. Still nothing. Let me try this. That means it's getting through the entire thing and just not running this. None of the delete stuff is working. Delete from pets where pet ID equals sprint F, which is post ID. I didn't change the name on that. It was still hidden field. Wow. Simple mistake. Now I feel pretty confident this should start working. Let's get her Sparky. Let me make sure that it is type hidden ID equals value two. Good. That's what I want. Delete. Ah. And snowball the mutant is gone. Woo! So now I can still switch back between users and pets, and I have all of this administration. Um, sort of built out. The other thing before I go is now that I actually have entered in some pet information, I'd like to do uh, just a little bit on the front end of things. Uh, right now I've got this div for each animal and I actually do want to create a, a CSS to start styling this just a little bit. But the other thing that I want to be able to do is I want you to be able to click on each animal and go to a page that's just about them. So this is a lot like, this is the same principle as the edit and delete functions. Uh, this is index. I'm going to send them to animal.php, and it's going to need a parameter. It's, and it's going to be the exact same thing that you're, you're used to seeing. I'm going to, maybe, there we go, id equals the pet id. This is already set up from previous record sets. I'm trying to keep them all kind of the same. And I know I only have one on the home page at the moment, but Sparky the turtle, if you look down the lower left, can you see it says PHP question ID equals one. So that's, I need to create this animal page that'll do this. Um, index file new, just a blank page. And this one is going to need a record set, RS pet. Pets, I'll grab everything where ID equals the URL parameter of ID. Or Sparky if I type in a one. So now I can go through and make some pretty little page that is, that'll be my H1. 
he is he's got a weight he's got an age fixed shots Oh, so right under this, I want to have posted by author on date created. Got shots, and then over here, I will put a little rating right beside them. And this is almost what I want, animal.php. So we have Sparky, who's a 5.0, um, posted by my email address. And that's not really what we want to have. We want people, that's their identifier, but we wanted to have it posted by the person's name. That is an inner join. And I just realized that off the top of my head and didn't practice this beforehand, so I definitely need to help making an inner, inner join. Um, does anyone remember the syntax to them? I always have to look it up. Select from select everything from table one from pets inner join. What's the name of the table? Users. On I'm trying to do pet underscore author equal user underscore ID. I think before pet author, don't you have to put pets dot pet author? You don't have to. Oh, okay. Um, in fact, that's why I put these as, as part of the column name okay. so that you don't have to do that. Um, and the reason that's done is so that it is only if you have columns that are named identically. Yeah, then you have to specify what table they're in, but you can get away without it. Okay. So as long as you have... I think this works. Where you have from pets first, and then you say all pet author, then they kind of like line up. Yes. Okay. User email, not ID. Now let's try it. Hurrah! Okay. So this should go and grab all of the information associated with the actual author. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it actually, it, if it made it this far, it's working. So posted by Bob Smith, I think is my name now, on date created. Aha. So even though that name is not in the pets database because the email is. It can go and follow that to the right table and go grab the associated info and we pop that in. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with this now. I guess you could have the page um, uh, please adopt me, something like that. Um, oh, the ratings. What I would actually recommend that happens here is if you want to have a rating don't just display the number. Do this. You can insert. You can actually insert an image. Select file name from data sources. I can tell it to go and grab the rating. And this is almost right. Image source equals. 1, 1 1.5, one, blah, blah, blah. And if I just put GIF, 
I might even want to put images slash. This is going to go in and find 5.0.gif, um, 4.5.gif. And so if you just make all of those graphics in Photoshop and name them, so the graphic doesn't exist, but it's looking for 5.0.gif, 4.5.gif, 4.0.gif, and you just go all the way on down. Just go make those graphics. Um, because when it's making the PHP, or when it's making the HTML, it doesn't care where this text goes or what it's used for. So we don't need to designate this as anything other than just the names of our files. And with me blathering on for 50 minutes, that's probably all your brains can take right now. So we'll pick this up next week.